Okay, YouTube. I was doing this video to answer a couple of questions that was asked to me. I thought it'd be better if I answered it in a video than trying to do it in the comment section or private message everybody back. But this is what's going on. I was asked if I was using the parallel kit to parallel these two together. No, I'm not using the parallel kit. I got this unit here hooked to one side of this breaker box. I have this unit here hooked to the other side of the breaker box. So the reason why I did it this way is because I balanced my loads out on each side of the breaker box and tried to make it to where each side of the breaker box was sucking about the same amount of juice when all the loads is on. All the loads is not on at one time. Some loads is on at a certain time, some loads is on at another time. So basically, the reason why I didn't want to parallel them is I didn't want this unit here putting out 600 watts when this unit here was only calling for um, 400 watts. So if I would have a parallel kit if this was calling for 400 watts and this one was call calling for 600 watts, what would happen is it would bring the watts up on both of the units so I would be putting extra power out of my batteries into the house that didn't need to be put into the house. So if this side here was only calling for 50 watts, this one here was calling for uh, 150 watts then this unit will put out only what it needs to um, feed the loads that it was needing to and this unit here would only put out 50 watts because it was only 50 watts pulling off of this side so that's the reason why I did not go with the parallel kit I didn't think I needed to and I was under the impression when I was reading off of their website is the only reason why you would want to go with the parallel kit is if you was going to use both of these units in conjunction with each other which means if you was trying to turn these units into one unit and to feed a load say like a uh, uh, maybe a 5000 watt load or something like that that you had you could parallel these two units together to come up with 5000 watts to feed that load which I wasn't trying to do this unit has this load that he's, it's going to uh, supply and this unit here has this load that it's going to supply. But to hook these units up when you do your sub panel here, the sub panel cannot be bonded. You have to bond this sub panel to the two units here. So when it's running off of these units, it's bonded through these units. And when it's running off of the grid power, it's bonded to the main breaker box so that's how you have to do it if you bond this unit you might have you know come into the problem where you might be blowing your units up because they're bonded inside of here which means it's running the neutral and the ground together I'm not a licensed electrician I've just been doing this for a long time so I pretty much know what I'm doing but I'm not licensed so I'm not giving anybody information this is just how I did mine but another thing I wanted to go into was my battery box here I vented my battery box and what I did was I took my vent down into my crawl space of, of my house it stays pretty cool down in the, in the crawl space so I figure I said why suck in fresh air from outside when the air from outside might be 90 degrees and if you would be running 90 degrees air through your air box which would heat your batteries and stuff up so basically I'm pulling through my crawl space and this one right here is the sensor that's inside of the box and we are 72.1 degrees inside of the box here Inside of this room here, it's uh, 77.7 .7 degrees inside of the room here. You come over here, let me hit this here. 
You can get a bigger, better picture. Yeah, you done went off already. This is the outdoor temperature here. It's 83 degrees outside. So it's 83 degrees outside. And it's 77.7 .7 degrees inside of this room here. But inside of the air box, I mean inside of the battery box, it's uh, 72.3 degrees. So I figured let's pull some of that cool air from up under the house through the air box to keep the batteries cool. And in the winter time it works just the same. Instead of pulling this cold air, you know, maybe 20 degree air from outdoors, sucking it through your air box. I keep saying air box. Through your battery box. Let's pull some of that warmer air from up under the crawl space. The crawl space normally stay between about 57 degrees and 60 degrees. So in the winter time I'll be pulling 60 degree air through my air box which will keep my batteries pretty much in the ideal temperature where it needs to be. And I won't be pulling zero degree air or 20 degree air from outdoors through my air box when it's exhausting the battery um, fumes out. So that's uh, what I did, and it seems to be working pretty good. And uh, any other questions, just comment down there. I'll try to answer it if you private message me. Either I'll try to get back with you, or maybe I will do another video to try to answer your questions. So anybody else that has, you know, maybe wanted to, that question asked, I can do it all at one time by doing a video about it. But that's how my system is working, and it's working pretty good for me. All right, you two. Thank you.